So why do some brands stay big when others don't? Well, that's a big topic. That could keep a conference of marketeers and consultants happy for a month. But I think the age at which the emotional engagement occurs is an important consideration. And by emotional engagement, I simply mean when the child first becomes aware of the brand. And I think there are two elements to this, visibility and choice. The brand needs to be visible to the child, visible perhaps in the playground, visible certainly on TV. Remember a mile a day helps you work, rest and play. But also, importantly, visible in the home. The child is very well aware that the brand of drink they're drinking is Coca-Cola. It's written on the can. They're probably reasonably aware of the brand of yoghurt they're eating, but totally unaware, I would say, of the brand of macaroni that's been used to make their macaroni cheese for tea. But even more important than the visibility is this concept of choice. So in most households, there is usually a choice of breakfast cereal, and the child is invited to select which one they would like. I want Cocoa Pops, not Shreddies. I want Shreddies, not Weetabix. Variety packs clearly have helped with this decision-making process. Marmite used the concept brilliantly with their Love It or Hate It campaign. And when I was growing up, generally there was a choice on the table between red sauce and brown sauce, and you're invited to choose. I want red, I want brown, I, I want neither. But somewhere along the line, that tradition has been lost, and brown sauce is now just this strange thing that, that Dad eats. But for me, however, the best example of this is when the child first chooses their football team. So in the UK, typically a child will choose their football team when they're about, I don't know, seven years old. It's a big decision. It's one of the biggest decisions they'll make, certainly one of the first important decisions they make. And they have loads of influences. They're influenced very much by the playground. They're influenced by their peers, what they see on TV, heavily influenced by their parents and where they live, of course. But when they've made that choice, it'll probably stay with them for the rest of their lives. So one of my two boys is a Manchester United fan, so of course he gets smaller rations and has to do more chores, whereas the younger boy has followed the correct path and supports Derby County. But whatever criteria they use to make the selection, it's now irrelevant. The chances are they will stay loyal to those teams until their dying day. Loyal regardless of price, regardless of quality, certainly if you're a Derby County fan, regardless of convenience, even if they move away. And to a much, much smaller degree, this same psychology works with brands. Now, for categories where the emotional engagement is much later, I don't know, say in teens or young adulthood, then things look very different. So in the 1950s, a group of men going out for a beer would probably have drunk a pint of mild. They might have smoked a woodbine cigarette and shaved with a Colgate product. But a generation later, their children, well, they would certainly look different, wearing different clothes, and they wouldn't have drunk mild, they'd have drunk a lager, maybe a skull or a harp or a Hofmeister. They'd have splashed on some old spice or brute, and they would have smoked John Player Special. Now, I don't know how many of you can remember John Player Special, but it's worth pointing out that this was, in the 1970s, an absolute mega, mega brand. They had a line of clothing, they had a Formula One car. They were huge and they were unassailable. If someone like me had stood up in 1979 and said that John Player Special would soon disappear, that would have seemed crazy. It's like me saying now that Coca-Cola will cease to exist in 2025. It's unthinkable. But the truth is, John Player Special has all but disappeared in the UK. So moving on a generation again. Now it's, it's Stella, not Skull. They're going to drink out of a bottle, not a can. They will shave, but not with a Colgate product. They'll shave with a Gillette product. And if they smoke at all, it might be Lambert and Butler. Oh no, but perhaps I'm already out of date. The sands of time are shifting again. Maybe now it's not Stella, but Peroni or perhaps even a cider. Maybe not Gillette, but Nivea for men.